Everybody, good morning. Good morning, sir. Ogomosho can do better than that. I said good morning. Good morning Gracious and great morning for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for today and we bless your name because of your goodness. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you, Lord, for what you are yet do in every life. Lord, I pray that everything you have for everyone, we will not miss anything in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Sit down in the blessing of the Lord. Today we are concluding our series of teachings on the purging that God does, that Christ does, that the Spirit of God or the Scripture that He does in our lives so that we will bear more fruit. Today I am rounding up the series with the message first things first in the ministry of a fruit bearing minister first things first in a ministry i want you to open to matthew chapter 6 verse 33 matthew chapter 6 verse 33 here are the words of jesus christ but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, all these things shall be added unto you. The success will be added. The fruitfulness will be added. The greatness will be added. And every blessing of ministry and the reward of ministry will be added. But here is the condition. Here is the foundation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Seek first the entry, your own entry into the kingdom of God. We have to enter. And if we don't enter, there is no way we can be profitable in exalting the kingdom, in expanding the kingdom, in extending the kingdom. Number one, you seek first your entry into the kingdom. Number two, you seek as you enter your enlistment in the kingdom. You, there is service in the kingdom. There is work in the kingdom. And you seek first. Uh, you know, you are not seeking other little, little things and other blessings. And you are not preoccupied. What can I get? What can I have? Seek first your entry into the kingdom. First, your enlistment in the service of the kingdom. And once you're enlisted, seek first your engagement in the kingdom. You engage. Jesus said, occupy until I come. And so you seek first your engagement. Seek First, your edification in the kingdom. The kingdom edifies us and the kingdom blesses us. The kingdom brings the virtue of heaven on kingdom citizens. And so you are seeking your own edification. How has the kingdom of God edified you? transformed you, changed your life, and made you to go on the path of righteousness. Seek first the expansion of the kingdom in our lives as we become ministers and professionals. We we'll see the kingdom of God and without any selfishness, on self, on, uh, selflessly, we we'll seek the expansion and the extension of the kingdom of God. Seek first. The number one thing in your life as you come into the kingdom is to seek the exaltation of the king of the kingdom. You're not seeking anything for yourself. You're not uh, trying to grab anything for yourself. You come into the kingdom. Look at position. I grab that. Look at prosperity. I grab that. Look at all these things. I grab. Seek. Number one. First. 
the exaltation of the king of the kingdom you know you have to enter into the kingdom before you can have all these how do i enter into the kingdom so that the edification the establishment the exaltation of the kingdom will be real through me jesus has said it he said blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven uh, we're poor in spirit the poor man doesn't have anything to pay for salvation he's so poor he cannot pay for the necessities essentials of belonging to the kingdom and so you see it's blessed at the poor in spirit because theirs will be the kingdom it says blessed are they that mourn what are they mourning for they died in adam and because we're dead in sins and trespasses we come and with our dead spirit a dead soul a dead works a dead ability we mourn because the essential thing is dead in us blessed a day that mourn they shall be comforted and they'll be invited and brought into the kingdom he says blessed at the meek when we come into the kingdom and we're seeking for us the kingdom of god now that christ has saved us and he has comforted us with his compassion he has comforted us with the forgiveness we're meek because we cannot brag we cannot be proud we cannot see i'm saved not by your power because of that he says blessed at the meek and then he says blessed are those that thirst and hunger after righteousness for they shall be filled that the essence of the kingdom the essence of the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of darkness is corruption is evil is sinfulness but now you have entered into the kingdom and that is your priority because of that you do hunger and thirst after righteousness and it says for thou shalt be filled and blessed are the merciful you've got the mercy of god in salvation the mercy of god in bringing you into the kingdom and putting everything before you and it says these are the advantages of the kingdom these are the abundant things in the kingdom and you know it's all by mercy and because of the mercy god has shown to you you want to be merciful to everyone blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy and then he says blessed are the pure in heart you come into the kingdom all iniquity is gone all infirmity is gone and you come with that purpose of mind if you're going to abide if you're going to continue if you're going to remain in that kingdom blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and then he tells us blessed are the peacemakers when you come into the kingdom you become an ambassador of peace he gives you his peace and there's peace in your heart there's peace in your home there's peace in your family there's peace in your community and the heaven we're going to is a peaceful kingdom where there is no conflict and there is no war and it says blessed then are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of god that is the kingdom we seek and our priority is that first we seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness we seek the righteousness of the kingdom and that is how we become established in the kingdom and we become enlisted in the work of the kingdom we engage in the work of the kingdom and now we would expand the kingdom extend the kingdom and we're waiting for the king of the kingdom that when he comes because we have been citizens of the kingdom it'll take us to the heavenly kingdom number one our life kingdom 
the kingdom of God and the kingdom of righteousness and peace. It tells us in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse uh, from verse 4 it says nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast led thy first love to the Ephesians church it said i have this against you at the beginning the kingdom of god was number one the kingdom of god was the priority and the power in the kingdom and the progress in the kingdom and the penetration of the kingdom in every heart you were so zealous and you were so desirous you wanted the kingdom and its righteousness to enter into every heart and into every home and into every community and you were totally committed but now you left your first love we can say that about almost the majority of people in the kingdom of god remember the good old time and the good prayerful time and the good harvesting time and the good evangelistic time and the good zeal you had in the past remember how you prayed in the past you remember who you gave in the past remember how you sought for souls to come into the kingdom so that the kingdom of god will be expanded and extended remember how you gave all in the past because you were zealous for the kingdom and i remember now the coldness the lukewarmness the lethargy and the turning back and then doing everything i was careless and loose hands it says nevertheless i have somewhat he gave thee because thou hast led thy first love what do we do now look at verse 5 in verse 5 remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works again the first works or, or else i will come to thee quickly and will remove the, my candle the candlestick out of its place except thou repent that's why the holy ghost is calling us back to where we were where we ought to be and is calling us to the height of profession and height of yieldedness unto the lord today first things first in the ministry of a fruit bearing minister three things we're looking at quickly number one the first fruits of converts brought fully to christ the first fruits that's what we did that's what we were supposed to be doing that those uh, fruits the converts will bring them to christ we want them for christ we we'll preach christ to them we extended the love of christ to them now that they accept now that they come we are bringing them to christ number two the foremost fruitful cultivators bearing fruits continually foremost you, you are in the front of the line you are the front of the queue and you want the foremost thing in your life you wake up in the morning how can i bring people to christ today what plans can i make and how can i get to the field and how can i get all the blockages out of the way foremost the foremost fruitful cultivators bearing fruits continually number three the faithful followers with consistency the faithful followers they are following christ they're following the example of christ they're following the pattern of christ they're following the model of christ they say what will christ do look at sinners there if sinners were here if christ were here what will jesus do look at the sick people there if christ were here what would he do look at the people that are scattered as sheep they have no shepherd if christ Christ were here what will Christ do these are the faithful followers with consistency bound 
forever to our captain. They do not allow anything. They do not allow anyone. They do not allow whatever is under the sun. Man, woman, under the sun, boy, girl, under the sun, ladies and women, under the sun, men, and some good-looking people, under the sun, money, under the sun, prosperity, under the sun. They do not allow anything under the sun to stop them from following after Christ. They are bound forever to the captain of our salvation. Look at number one. Number one, the first fruits of converts brought fully to Christ. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the fruit of repentance and faith in Christ. Number two, the fact, not feeling, the fact of repentance and faithfulness to Christ. Number three, the fullness of repentance and fellowship in Christ. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the, uh, the fruits of repentance and faith in Christ. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. That's not a suggestion, it's a command. That's not an opinion, it's a command. That's not an optional thing if you can, but if you cannot, alright. No, it's not an optional thing. This is the duty and this is obligatory it says bring it forth the fruits meet for repentance it tells us in acts chapter 26 reading from verse 20 it says but i showed first 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 unto them of damascus and at jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet, fit, ready, suitable for repentance. You see the emphasis of the, pre of the apostles, the preachers in the early church. What Christ had told them, go into all the world and you will preach repentance in my name. Everywhere. It tells us in Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 31. Acts chapter 5 verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. There is uh, no forgiveness without repentance because repentance comes first there. It's the number one. It's the foundation. When you repent, when you turn away from sin and then you ask for the mercy of God and the grace of God, then forgiveness will come. And that is what we tell the, uh, the, the congregation outside on the field. We tell them, yes, God God is good, but you have to turn away from your bad life. Yes, God is gracious, but you have to turn away from your graceless life. Yes, God is the supplier, but you have to turn away from the shame of your life. You repent, and as you repent, then he grants forgiveness. It's a faithful God, but you have to turn away from your unfaithfulness. It's a holy God. You have to turn away from your unholy Holy life is a God, the God of heaven, holy, holy, holy. The angels cry. You have to turn away from your ungodliness. Repentance falls. Thorough repentance. Genuine repentance. Heartfelt repentance. A well-known repentance that all the people around you will know that you have repented. And that is what we tell those people on the field of evangelism before they can have the forgiveness of their sin. We don't talk about grace without telling the people you need grace, you need mercy because you are a lawbreaker. 
and as a lawbreaker the judgment of God is upon you all have sinned and come short of the glory of God because you fall short that's why you need the grace of God in your life repentance first and then the forgiveness of sin we're looking at number two here number two in the fact not feeling of repentance and faithfulness to christ the fact the fact it's not that i feel i have repented uh -uh, you don't feel it it's a fact it's a fact and when you take away uh, something from there and you put it the other way this place now is vacant and the fact is something you know, has been taken away when you take away your mind from your sin when you take away your heart from your sin when you take your desire away from your sin when you say with all my heart all my soul I abandon my sin it is a fact behold the lamp of god that taketh away the sin of the world when it is taken away the fact is you'll not find it there anymore we're looking at galatians chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 23 and they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he was destroyed that's repentance because he was a totally changed man now he totally transformed now a uh, man now if the preacher is not transformed how are we going to expect the transformation of the people is preaching to if the father is not transformed if the mother is not transformed how are we going to expect the transformation of the children if the workers and the cultivators if they have not repented how do we expect the transformation of the fields they are cultivating if the apostle is only an apostle by name if the prophet is only prophet by name if the evangelist the pastor the teacher is only by name and they themselves have not repented how are they going to help other people to understand that repentance is a necessity that repentance is compulsory paul the apostle said they heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he once destroyed look at verse 24 in verse 24 and they glorified god in me if he was going out and trying to preach the gospel and he's still persecuting people he's preaching he's persecuting he's uh, telling them of the grace of god he's living a graceless life he's talking about the glory of god and he's living a shameful life they're not going to glorify god if you are preaching the grace of god and you're living a graceless life if you are preaching the goodness of god and you are living a self-centered and selfish life who will glorify god because of you and the glorified God in me look at Acts chapter 19 verse 18 and many that and many that believed came and they confessed and they showed their deeds look at verse 19 verse 19 uh, tells us it says many of them also which use curious arts occultic arts waistband and uh, occultic things uh, all of them they say they believe they brought their books together and they bunch them they didn't transfer the occultism to other people come on here i'm born again now i used to you know have all these occultic books and the stargazing books but now i cannot do that anymore i hand them over to you you don't want to perish do you want him to perish you don't want to die an occultic sinner 
and you transfer the occulted books to him, the regalia to him, and the instruments you are using to him, and the notebook of the Habadis, when the serpents do this, when the serpents apply that, and you transfer that to them because you are now a believer. And you don't want to perish all the alcohol you were selling before. I cannot sell alcohol anymore now. I am born again now. I want to throw a feast and give you this and give you this. Or you call somebody a dealer and you say, come and buy everything. Because I'm a believer now. That's no repentance. That's no repentance. You're not showing that you believe that this is evil and because it is evil i cannot deal in them anymore you see in the early church those who were truly repentant as a fact not feeling this is what he did many of them also which is curious as brought their books together and bunch them before all men and they counted the price of of them and found each fifty thousand pieces of silver then in verse 20 it says so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed uh, that's what we do when the repentance is genuine we're looking at luke chapter 19 reading from verse 8 in luke chapter 19 verse 8 and zacchaeus stood and said unto the lord behold lord he had made him now the lord of his life he says the half of my goods i give to the poor that is repentance that is conversion if the man is still as stingy today as he was yesterday there's no repentance there if the man is so hard handed as he was yesterday there's no repentance there if the man does no feeling for those who are suffering and he says yeah let them suffer that's their luck and after all they made themselves poor and i got my riches my own way and i'm not going to part with anything a man like that has not repented a woman like that has not repented repentance when it is a fact there's a change of life there's a change of action there's a change of direction and he says lord the half of my goods i give to the poor and if i have taken anything from any man by false accusation i restore him for Zacchaeus, who taught you that his conscience taught him that Zacchaeus, who taught you that? Are you in a denomination that preaches restitution? Have you gone to that? He said, no. He's been a tax collector all his life. He wasn't a religious person, but he knew. He knew. The conscience told him that thing you take unlawfully from other people, they're suffering because of that. They're crying because of that. Do you say you are following Christ? You must not have all those things you have stolen, whether it's money, whether it's certificate or whatever, or a woman you have stolen without even consulting or having the consent of the parent, or the one you are multiplying, first wife, second wife, third wife, you just pile them together. Zacchaeus knew that if repentance was going to be a fact and not feeling, you know, there'll be something in his life that he did that will convince himself and convince people that you are truly a repentant person if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold. I pray that this practical Christianity will be reaching in our lives and shown and revealed in every life in Jesus name give me a good good morning amen
We're looking at number three. Number three here is the fullness of repentance and fellowship in Christ. When we repent, it's a full repentance. It's not that I sweep some things under the carpet. I still have some secret relationship illicit relationship with the old boyfriend and the old uh, girlfriend and the old same partner and whenever you want a release of your mind whatever you uh, you know quietly and silently and surreptitiously without allowing anybody to know you go that direction repentance if it's going to be accepted by the Lord is the fullness of repentance and fellowship in Christ. We're looking at Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were preached in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's one thing to ask the question. It's another thing when you have the answer to walk by the answer. Look at that man. He ran to Jesus Christ and he said, Good master, what good thing should I do that will, I will inherit the kingdom? And the Lord said, You know the commandments. Don't steal. Don't do this. Don't. He said, I've been doing that from my youth up to this time. And Jesus loved him and said one thing that lackest go do this and come back to follow me and the fellow went back sorrowful I didn't know that was what he was going to say. I didn't know that that is what he was going to demand. How many people ask the question, what shall we do? And then you give them the answer from the word of God and from the depth of the revelation of the spirit of God. And then they don't do it. But look at these people, men and brethren, what shall we do? In verse 38, verse 38, but and then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal, remission, forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Verse 40. And with many other words eh, did he testify and Exhort saying, Save yourself from this unto a generation. Verse 41 it says, And they that received that word, they gladly received his word. He spoke about repentance. They were glad. I'm glad somebody told me that. Turn away from sin. I'm glad somebody told me that. And turn away from your evil past life. I'm glad somebody told me that. Rescue yourself, save yourself, escape for your life so that you will be you'll be able to enter into the kingdom of God. I am glad somebody told me then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. And then verse 42, and it says they continued steadfastly, they continued. They didn't continue sluggishly. They didn't continue reconsidering. Do I want to follow this? Don't I want to follow this? They didn't, uh, you know, continue grudgingly. Why did you ask uh, Peter that, uh, what shall we do? They didn't, uh, you know, continue uh, looking back and saying, okay, I'll try it for one week. And if it doesn't work, those are not converts. Those are not converts. The real converts that we bring to Christ. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We'll come to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the foremost 
fruitful cultivators bearing fruits continually the people that have come to christ and they have burnt the bridge behind them because elijah passed by and he saw elisha and elisha was plowing with the twelfth yoke of oxen and he threw his mantle on him elisha understood he understood the spoken language he understood the body language he understood the people to real language and he said elijah i understand i will follow but i need you you know say bye bye to my parents and then he burnt the uh, the yoke of oxen and then he served everybody and he said bye bye that was final those who are going to serve the lord they burnt the bridge behind them they said there is no point of returning we're following after the lord and we're going to follow him with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind and we're now for the kingdom for the expansion of the kingdom for the extension of the kingdom for the exaltation of the king of the kingdom and that is the reason why now they are foremost in fruitfulness they are foremost in cultivating they are foremost in bearing fruit and they do that continually we're looking at john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work it says no other thing to do i want you to remember that at the time of jesus christ when jesus was here on earth the arch political problem and the political pro the romans were ruling over them and even his disciple expected christ we're under the Roman rule. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? He said, I am here to do the work, the will of him that sent me. And to finish his work, I'm here for the salvation of humanity. I'm here not for political sin, for physical sin. I am here that I will introduce the kingdom unto the people of God. And then I'm raising you as disciples so that you'll have the same mind. And you will go to the harvest field and do what needs be done until i finish if i've not finished this i cannot get involved in that then in verse 35 verse 35 says say not ye there are yet four months and then comes the harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest it says this should be our consecration our concentration and we do that with all consistency in first corinthians chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 10 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 it says for by the grace of god i am what i am by the grace of god you see paul the apostle he was a committed man he was a one-way man a one duty man a one profession man it was and he wasn't misusing the grace of god uh, you know all the injurious things he used to do and the murdering and all that was not entrenched in him i said after all there is grace now and i feel temptation to go and do that again which i used to do and the grace of god will cover me the people today who do not really have the experience of the grace of god that's how they take the grace of god he used to commit adultery and now he says he's born again and he's having the temptation to commit adultery or to commit fornication and then before he commits that he says grace of god grace grace wonderful grace and that grace goes beyond everything i can do 
you and then he goes to commit adultery or fornication then he comes back oh god of all grace and god of all mercy oh we have a court of justice in our land and somebody had been pardoned before graciously and how he feels the temptation to go and steal again to go and rob houses again and then he's saying well mercy and grace will always be there and then he goes to do that and they catch him and bring him to the judge and the judge says were you not here before yes my lordship i was here before but you were merciful and you were gracious and you pardoned me and i know that you still have grace they'll put him in the prison god is not a god of the grace that will gloss over your sin that you say that you are born again you are a child of god and then you are going to commit sin, going to a grace 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 the paul the apostle says the grace of god comes to transform our lives and the grace of god comes to equip us for the work he has called us to do and he says but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but i labored grace makes us to labor in righteousness and for righteousness but i labored more abundantly than they all yet not i but the grace of God which was with me. We're dividing this part to three parts. And we're looking at number one, the unwavering concentration on fruit bearing evangelism. Number two, the undiminished consecration for fruitful evangelization number three is the unstoppable commission for faithful evangelists we're looking at number one number one the unwavering consecration on fruit bearing evangelism look at acts of the apostles chapter six we're looking at uh, chapter six of the acts of the apostles and hey, look at uh, verse three there in verse three we're told acts chapter six verse three it says wherefore brethren look here among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint unto this business they didn't want any distraction that will distract them from the work the lord had given to them uh, look at uh, verse 4 there in verse 4 he tells us but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word that was their concentration they said that the ministry of the word of god the watch of salvation and the watch of repentance and the word of the grace of god we commit ourselves to that are we like that today are we giving ourselves completely completely to that work in acts of the apostles chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 16 acts chapter 26 we're looking at verse 16 it says but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have a appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of the things in the which i will appear unto thee then in verse 17 it says delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom now i send thee in verse 18 it says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they 
may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me look at his uh, confession proclamation in verse 19 it says whereupon O king Agrippa I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision his concentration his uh, kind of uh, perseverance was on that evangelism i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says but i showed first unto them of damascus and at jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of judea and then to the gentiles that they shall repent and turn to god and do works meet for repentance and, and and that's what all the believers that's what they concentrated on in acts chapter 8 reading from verse 4 acts 8 verse 4 it says and they that were scattered abroad they went everywhere preaching the word the concentration of the believers to bear fruit in evangelism look at number two here number two is the undiminished consecration for fruitful evangelism undiminished consecration for fruitful evangelism you know when you look at the life of believers and the lives of uh, ministers uh, we will start we're running fast we start and we go everywhere evangelizing and if we experience some difficulties if we experience some unexpected painful experiences then we'll say i think i need to reconsider this a commitment to evangelism then if we're feeling weak in the body and because of that weakness we'll say i think i need to tread gently now and i need to moderate what i do because otherwise i don't know what will happen or maybe we're getting higher in the denomination where we belong to and they promote us here and there and there and then with the position we have now we're asking ourselves should we still do this with this kind of position that we have and the position the higher some people go the less they're committed to the essential thing or maybe some other people are telling them sir we young people are here and we can we can do this why don't you why don't you retire and then another person will say why don't you just rest and watch us do this and when many people say that in different ways and they don't appeal to the bible they appeal to the workplace they say in the workplace what the people do once they reach 60 65 70 at most then they vacate so that they can give chance to the younger generation you know why they do that over there the work is limited and because the work is limited they don't want the old older people to just continue because uh, these other younger generation they, they might even die before there is anything for them to do that's why they say vacate that siege and let a young person come and take over evangelism is not like that no matter what we have done no matter where we have reached there's so many sinners that are still there we bring in the young people and they're doing it and there's still so many sinners and every day thousands hundreds of thousands of people are born and then they are growing up and the work is so much what those apostles in jerusalem 12 for them they labored every day 
there's still something to do. And when Paul came in, there's still something to do. While Timothy and Titus and Silas and the other younger people were doing something, there's still something to do for aged Paul. And so the church is not like the world. Somebody has to stop before another person can do something. It doesn't work like that in the kingdom. And so we have undiminished consecration that whoever we are, whatever we're doing, until you breathe your last, you're still committed and consecrated to the work of evangelization, the work of edification, and the work of education and training the people in the church and the younger generation. We're looking at Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly, strictly command you that you should not speak or teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Uh -huh. Pharisee, what well, the problem was well, that didn't you say unto Pilate, let his blood be upon us and upon our children now that the robber meets the road and the practical thing has now come why are you complaining that you intend to bring this man's blood upon us that's what you declared yourself uh, you know there are people that will say let heaven fall and then when the heaven falls even a part of the heaven that falls then they say why why remember what you said the people that say this is what I'm going to do and whatever the consequence damn the consequence when the consequence comes why do you complain the people said you intend to bring this man's blood upon us but look at verse 29 in verse 29 then Peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to be God's rather than men men of authority we have to be god rather than those men of authority men of power and men that you know they have the history that they can like uh, nebuchadnezzar through shadrach meshach and abedi going to fire and they say did you hear that we told you you must not do this and will to obey God rather than men? There are even church leaders that make themselves so much of authority. I remember many years ago, I started Bible study with a few people in my apartment and men of authority, they called me. He said, don't do that. I said, show me the chapter and the verse in the Bible that says, as a believer, I couldn't share my faith. I couldn't tell people how to be born again. He said, shut up. You want to tell us Bible? You want to read Bible to us? We say, as long as you are remember in this church you cannot you must not have another thing somewhere that we have not appointed and then you're doing that i said if you cannot show me the chapter and the verse then i'll continue to say uh -huh. proud man because of education, because it's gone to university. No, you, what has university got to do with that? Because the Bible says unto all them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I was called to a committee of powerful, authoritative people. And, uh, you know, they questioned me and I kept on saying, Jesus said, uh-uh, don't say that here. And I, but I kept on saying it. You will keep on saying it. Yeah. And eventually, they want me ahead of time and they said, all right, go ahead. 
you will see what will happen. I said, go ahead and obey God rather than men. And eventually, I was in church and I had my name and they excommunicated me and they said, because this man, university man, educated man, they can write with their toes they can write with their finger and because of that they will not listen to men of authority and then they told me i wasn't a member of the church anymore but you understand there is the universal church there is the local church they can kick you away from the local church they cannot kick you away from the universal church Give me good amen. I didn't stop because of that. And some of the members of my church then, they'll see me, they say, come, are you, can we? I'll say, yes. Are you the one that announced his name? I'll say, yes, joyfully, excitedly. And they say, ah sorry for you there's nothing to be sorry about we're doing the work of the kingdom i am enlisted for the kingdom i'm engaged for the kingdom i'm expanding the kingdom i'm extending the kingdom i'm exalting the king of the kingdom there's nothing to be sorry about and now look at this some years after look at what is happening what if i stopped at that time what if I cringe at that time? What if I allow men of authority to crush me and to crush the, uh, the pe preaching of the gospel? You will not stop. Yeah. It says Peter and the rest of the apostles, the other apostles, they answered, we ought to be God rather than men and god will bless the obedience we're coming to number three here number three is the unstoppable commission this commission is unstoppable i said this commission is unstoppable jesus said peter simon peter flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my father who is in heaven and i tell you this that upon this rock of confession i build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church it's unstoppable. The commission God has given us, the commission Christ has given us for fruitful evangel evangelism. It will not be stopped in your mouth. It will not die at your doorstep in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then it says in verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And teach all nations. He wants all nations to hear. And they have not all heard. He wants all communities to hear of the gospel. And they have not all heard. He wants every creature everywhere to hear that Jesus says. And they have not all heard. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and then in verse 20 it says and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the world and the church say amen Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2, 
preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine look at verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lost shall they heed to themselves teachers have been itching ears verse 4 in verse 4 and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables now verse 5 even with all those conditions but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist do the work of an evangelist go everywhere you remember in the church go you minister in the church go and tell them you're not telling them history you're not telling them you're not trying to look for difficult passages in the bible that you are not sure of its interpretation go tell them what we're sure of that jesus is savior that no man can save himself that everybody needs salvation that as you believe on the lord jesus christ you will be saved tell them whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved if you cannot tell those who are sophisticated uh, tell those who are simple minded like yourself if you cannot confront uh, the argument the argumentators tell the people who are simple hearted they need salvation and you can talk to them if a woman and the men look down on women they belittle the women and they said you're a woman i'm a man why are you talking to me there are millions of women go and talk to them and if you happen to be a professor professors like yourself those who have studied the depth and the height and the branches and the root of uh, psychology philosophy you can match them go and tell them let everyone take the touch of the gospel let everyone take the message of the gospel and go and preach to them and do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry we're coming to point number three now point number three is faithful the faithful followers with consistency bound forever to our captain we're dividing this to three parts number one the rewards of abiding fruits of harvest number two the regrets of absent fruit of holiness and number three the rejoicing for our abode forever in heaven that's where you are going i said that's why you are going and when you think of forever 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 in heaven a hundred years a thousand years a million years a trillion years you are still there in heaven rejoicing in heaven because of what you are able to do here for 10 years for 30 years for 80 years you're able to do that and the reward for your effort the reward for your evangelism will be forever and ever i see the crown in future on your head I see the joy of heaven in future attending to you in Jesus' name. I see the angels coming to visit you in your mansion. Are you evangelist so and so? Are you soul winner so and so? Are you the preacher so and so? And you are even you are shy because an angel is coming. We couldn't do that work that an angel could not do is passed into your hand you will be faithful in jesus name look at number one number one the rewards of abiding fruit of harvest reward of abiding fruit of harvest in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 8 it says now he that planteth and he that watereth 
are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor amen, amen. there's no competition you will receive your reward according to your labor and there is no contradiction you know because so and so is there and is running this way and then i follow the same field and then i am trying to tell them that one is not good enough that one is not good enough you go to your own field and do what is good enough he will receive his reward from the lord and you will receive your reward from the lord what if our churches all the churches we have in the city and the churches we have in this state and the churches we have in this nation what if we stop fighting ourselves and we start farming on the field of evangelism when i hear good things happening through that evangelist i praise the lord when he hears good thing happening through my evangelism he praises the lord and everybody concentrates on doing the work that the lord has given us to do without fighting each other satan is fighting the preachers and uh, you know the world is fighting the preachers the flesh is fighting the preachers why should you support satan and support the people that want to ruin and wreck the preachers now be a supporter, be a helper, and be a complementary hand in the work of the Lord. Let him evangelize, and you go forth and evangelize, and everyone shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Amen. Amen. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the regrets for the absent fruit of holiness when we eventually get on the other side what the lord will reward us for is bringing people from the earth to heaven and there's no way there's no way they can get to heaven without holiness no man shall see the lord if you labor if you sweat, if you cultivate, if you give, if you study, if you go to seminary and then you come back and you labor with all your strength and spend everything you have, but you tell your people holiness is not possible, righteousness is not possible. Everybody will be sinning and sinning until the day of their death. And death is the only thing that can stop sinfulness then death will not be an enemy death will be a friend death is the only thing that can stop sinfulness then that means christ should not have died because death will normally do the work the bible says christ has come to do no it's not death it's christ it's the sacrifice of christ it is the giving of himself that makes us to have the strength and the grace and the power to live in holiness of life but if that holiness is missing from your converts and it's missing from your own life it's missing from your own uh, from your own preaching how will they get to heaven then you would have labored in vain you would have uh, on down the last day you say and i know and i know i would have told them that the grace of god brings righteousness and holiness in their lives you will regret all eternity because in your converts, in the people that followed after your ministry, there was the absence of the fruit of holiness. But the Lord will help us. That way we have said before, no need for holiness. Now we go back and we tell them, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god will go and tell them follow peace with all men 
and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness will not be missing in your converts in Jesus' name. And we're coming to First Peter chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 17. First Peter chapter 4, reading from verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that will be not the gospel? In verse 18, if the righteous castly be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If our ministry, if our ministration, if our evangelism, if our pastoral ministry only produces people who are ungodly and they rejoice in that ungodliness and they remain sinners, where will they appear on the final day? Day, and if they don't get to heaven, what is God going to reward you for? I pray that we will follow through on the ministry the Lord has given us and our rewards will not be taken away on the final day. We're coming to point number three here. Point number three, we're looking at the rejoicing for our abode abode in heaven forever 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 in heaven in luke chapter 10 reading from verse 20 it says notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rejoice because your names are written in heaven Amen. Amen. Your name in heaven. Your seat in heaven. Your mansion in heaven. Your place position in heaven. And your rewards in heaven. While you are here on earth, the Lord will protect your life. He will preserve you. He will show you the narrow way to heaven and the strength and the grace to follow after that narrow path one day at a time. Don't worry about the trouble tomorrow. Don't try to cross the bridge before you get there. When you get to that bridge, there will be the heavenly power that will carry you over. Think of one day at a time. The temptation of this one day, you will overcome. The challenges of this one day, you will face and you will be triumphant in Jesus' name. One day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time. Look at this year. We started January 1st. It appears that the end of the year was so far away. One day at a time, 2nd of January. One day at a time, 3rd of January. Here we are, 1st day of August. 7 has already passed. And whatever remains, the Lord will see you through. And when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. We which are alive, there will be enough grace that will keep you until that day. And so shall we forever, forever, forever be with the Lord. I rejoice with you. You will be there. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Our names are written in heaven. Our reward is there in heaven. Our Lord is here in heaven. Our mansions are there in heaven. And today we're doing the work, the work of evangelism so that on that final day, final day, forever, will be there in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me that I'll bear fruit in the kingdom for you. 
I'll bear fruit of converts that I will bring unto you. And I myself, I'll be so committed and consecrated, I will always, always, always labor for the reward that is to come. And your repentance will be a fact and not feeling. And your repentance will be something that we can talk about. That all the people will talk about. And that your conscience will bear witness to. And for my gifts, I give goods, I give to the poor. And if I have taken, if I have taken, if I have taken anything, anything by false accusation, I'll restore everything, I'll restore it fourfold. Zacchaeus decided fourfold, but you know, just restore what belongs to other people that ought to be in their hand. And you remain in fellowship with the Lord every time. Fellowship in His Word. Fellowship in His will. And fellowship in His calling upon your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, there must be a change, a definite change in your life. The grace of God will do it. The power of the Lord will do it in your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Foremost, fruitful harvesters, cultivators working on the field in the Lord nothing will weaken your hand nothing will weaken your endeavor yes all the grace yes all the strength yes all you need you will do it in your life Tell him, others that went before us, they did it in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord. You too can do it. You have concentration, concentration on that work. You will not be here and there. Anything that will waste your time, waste your effort, waste your resources, you abandon those things. You concentrate and you consecrate. And from day to day, your consecration will not be diminished. And the commission the Lord has given you will be unstoppable. Each day, each day, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will care for the things of itself. Sufficient for the day. And the duty. And the responsibility of this day. And you have enough grace, enough power, enough strength, enough light to bear through. The commission to be a faithful evangelist. And now your rewards waiting for you. The reward of the fruit of the harvest. You're looking forward. And the Lord is not going to disappoint you. While you are here, He provides all the resources, all the ability, all the strength. Everything you need, and you will have rewards for the abiding fruit of harvest. Don't allow the absence of the fruit of holiness. By your fruits, we shall know you. Preach the power of God to transform. The converts, the congregants, the people that listen to you. Show them it's not holiness by human effort, holiness by grace, 
Holiness by faith. Holiness by believing the word of promise that he has given us. And when our people are righteous and holy, then in heaven, we will not regret or miss our reward. You have joy. Rejoicing. All the days of eternity. Unending joy. Unending happiness. Because your fruit will be there ready to see. More grace in your life, strength in your life, power in your life, anointing in your life. To be victorious every day. And your joy, nobody will take away. The fruit of your ministry. Nobody will disperse. The same grace. In Paul the apostle. That made him to labor. More than the rest. Of the apostles and the workers. That same grace available today. You will not lack sufficient grace, abundant grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen in your ministry. Amen, Amen in your life. Amen, Amen in your family. Amen in your finances. Amen for the presence of God in your life. One day at a time, His grace is sufficient for you. His provision is sufficient for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You will not be an abandoned orphan. Our Heavenly Father, our loving Jesus, our comforting spirit will always be with you. Raise up that hand. Father, we well, thank you. What you have promised, you will fulfill. You said you will take everyone, every brother, every sister, every male minister, every female minister, everyone without exception. You say your presence will never leave. And your power will never leave. And your grace will never drop. And that everything, everyone needs to be successful. Every day you will accomplish. Fulfill your word in every life in Jesus name. Grace abundant for every life. Anointing abundant in every life. The breaking of yoke in every life, every day for ministry in Jesus' name. On the field, no power will be able to confront or conquer or crush any of your ministers here in this world, over here in the Alpha location or online, radio, television, anywhere we're connected together. I pray abundant power will flow into every life now in Jesus' name. The thief cometh not but to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ has come that he will give us life, abundant life, excited life, joyful life, successful life, significant life. Do it in everyone in Jesus' name. The failure of the past and the defeat of the past and the discouragement of the past will be like water under the bridge is flowed away. But now, a new start. 
but now a new spirit but now a new success but now new stars going out everywhere they will turn many to righteousness they will shine your particular self your light will shine the glory of the lord will shine upon you in jesus name where you are being careful and worried and anxious and you are wumbling and you are thinking i don't know what will come again new courage in your life new conviction in your life and the power that makes everyone to succeed let it come upon every soul every minister everyone now in jesus name the courage you give to Daniel, give to everyone. The confidence you gave to those and the apostles, give to everyone. And Lord, I pray there will be no regret of anyone, everyone you have called in Jesus' name. Those past days of worry, anxiety, those past days are gone. Now you go forth in the strength of the Lord. The Lord will never leave you. His power will never leave you. His presence will never leave you. His prosperity will never leave you. Any day, every day, whatever you need to succeed, the Lord will supply He'll open your ears, he'll open your eyes, and everywhere you go, you will not see darkness anymore. You will see the light. You will not see impossibility anymore. You will see the possibilities. You will not see failure anymore. You will see fruitfulness. Go forth. In this power of the Spirit, there will be no disappointment in your life. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joy today, joy tomorrow, and joy forevermore.